Well, this is Thursday, and of course this morning we got the weekly export sales data. We can review those numbers in case you missed them. Uh, on the corn sales last week, 383,100 tons. And what we do here is we combine the old and new crop together. Soybeans, 410,500 tons. A hefty week on soy meal. Look at that, 402,100 tons. And that's not the end of the story. Now we had 600 tons of soy oil that was sold and wheat came in at 359,200 tons. And then we had an overnight sale to talk about on top of all that. And I mentioned the 402,000 on the uh, soybean meal. Well, add this on top of that. This morning we had a, a flash sale of 103,400 tons of soy meal to Mexico. Well, that's turning into quite a week for soy meal trade as really helping to lift up the uh, soybean complex. So let's review everything, shall we? Let's go to the board and uh, we'll start with corn. On the uh, corn trade here, we have the September eight and three quarters higher. We're at 630, almost on the high of the day. And December corn now nine and a quarter higher. We're at 627 and three quarters, only one tick off of its high of the day. On the soybeans, here we go. September now 21 and a quarter uh, higher at 1530 and a quarter. And November 20 and three quarters higher at 1448 and a half. On our quotes provided by bar chart, we have uh, Chicago September wheat now up 18 and three quarters, and we have it at 818 and a half. Kansas City on that same September contract is 20 higher at 892 and three quarters. Minneapolis wheat September 15 and three quarters higher at 922 per bushel, and December cotton up 173 points at 102.67. We're joined by Ted Seifert of Zener Ag Hedge. He's located in Chicago and. Boy, they really took a lot off the top of the market late yesterday before the close, and now they're putting it right back again today, or at least most of it. What happened? Yeah, you know, yesterday we had uh, a little bit of a shift in the forecast, right? And so that happened around 11 o'clock, well, when we got the midday run, and so we started to see the markets back off. Uh, and also, if you still look at the 8 to 14-day outlook, there's a lot of cooler temperatures that are coming in. Uh, but today, we're worried about that near-term forecast once again. You know, the, the heat in the plains that are really going to be cooking upper hundred or uh, upwards of 100 plus degrees. So, yes, we've got that going on. We had export sales here today, which were okay. Um, you know, it's really meal. That's that's the star there. The new crop bean sales aren't all that great. This is a time of year where we would we, we would expect to see China coming in and buying pretty much on a daily basis. Uh, and they are, they're, they're making some purchases and it's good to see, but it's not gotten to the point where we can say, oh, wow, this is really uh, out of the normal or this is very strong. But the meal sales are really good. And there's been a lot of people wondering why meal has really been very strong lately. It's been really the leader, especially look at that August meal, uh, even September, really very strong. Well, we're seeing it now. We're seeing, we're seeing the, the, the exports happening. I mean, that was a very big number for meal exports. And then on top of that, as you mentioned, we see another big sale to Mexico here today. So meals leading the way. Um, it also goes a long ways to kind of uh, understanding the September, November spread and how the September has just gained wildly on November over the past 10 days or so. Uh, well, that whether, whether that will continue or not, I'm not sure. You know, we saw some export sales cancellations in the old crop uh, and, and pretty decent sales in new crops. So at some point that spread may adjust. And all of this, you know, leads us, leads me to the point that we have a very big USDA WASD report coming tomorrow. So everything that's happened this week could potentially all get taken away, depending on what this report has to say, or it could really accelerate things. You look at things like corn, which is running into its 200-day moving average, and it's done that for three days in a row and then backed off. I wonder if we're going to wait to see that report before we try to get through it or completely fail here. Hmm. Uh, same thing with soybeans looking at the 100-day moving average. Absolutely. All right. Well, good points all around. Uh, sit tight here, Ted. We'll come back and talk about the cattle and hog markets here on a Thursday when we come back. I want to take a quick look at uh, what's going on in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Of course, we had the PPI numbers that came out today, <clears throat> and they were actually a little better than had been expected. Trade really did seem to like that report, and they liked the uh, CPI numbers yesterday as well. September Dow Jones futures. Well, they are now up 311 points at 33,571. The dollar, on the other hand, yesterday got trounced. Today we're down again, down almost 300 points. September now at 104.785. Now, the silver lining there is that would be helpful. It would make our ag products cheaper overseas. 
September West Texas Intermediate crude now 92 cents higher at 92.85 per barrel. Meanwhile, in our livestock trade today, we're higher across the board on the first four contracts, but not much. October up seven cents at 144.55. And if we look at the feeder cattle market here today with a higher corn market, one would think that'd be kind of tentative on feeders. And they were higher earlier, but now they have turned lower. September down 85 cents at 184.15. And my goodness, that's now about $1.70 off of its earlier high this morning, starting to get real weak in the knees. Lean hogs, you have October 22 cents higher at 101.07. Uh, let's go back to Ted Seifert here. We had the weekly export sales on the beef and the pork. Uh, what did you think of those numbers here this morning? Yeah, not, not amazing for beef. And, and actually, pork was a bit of a disappointment compared to what we were seeing last week. China was in there for pork uh, purchases, but it was much smaller. It, uh, a week ago, it was, what, 16.8 thousand metric tons. Now we're at, what, three, a little over 3 thousand metric tons. So, yes, on one hand, it's, it's positive to see China still buying pork, but also we'd like to see these big numbers. And, you know, those hogs got into new contract highs once again here today, but we've since simmered back down off of those. I think still holding on to unchanged at the moment. Uh, but we're getting really overbought in, in, in the hogs at this point. So, you know, at some point we're due for a little bit of a correction. But overall, I think that market still has more upside potential. I think we're still going higher. Uh, as far as the feeder cattle are concerned, big reversal lower, um, a, a bit of a down day after the big reversal higher yesterday. So it's a little bit disappointing that we're not able to get follow through to the upside. But as you pointed out, Marlon, you know, it's kind of hard to do that when you've got, you know, corn eight to 10 cents higher. So that's having an effect. And then, you know, live cattle just kind of treading water up here. Um, again, I still think there's more upside potential there. But as it, if I'm a producer, I, I'm a little worried that something happens from a uh, macroeconomic or, or a you know, stock market perspective. Yep. Uh, you know, we really like seeing that lower dollar today, but I think it's a good time to be placing some hedges in the live cattle. Interesting. All right. Well, well taken. Uh, good advice. I appreciate that, and we'll uh, talk with you again real soon. Ted Seifert of Zaner Ag Hedge in Chicago. Janet, back to you.